So, you want to have the ultimate gaming setup? In this epic tutorial, I'm going to show you how to spend 9,000 fucking dollars so you're able to buy into the ridiculously overpriced secondhand video game market. I'll also tell you some middle ground steps between owning the least amount of every console in order to play every game physically before you just emulate everything on PC, compare the costs, the work needed to do it, etc, etc. But first, let's start with a backwards compatibility. So some consoles are backwards compatible, yeah? How many consoles would you need in order to play every game? You need every console minus like three. Yeah, there are a lot of video game consoles, but how many of them are backwards compatible with the Magnavox Odyssey or the Vectrex? Fucking none of them! But there's official collections, emulation, remakes of some of these games, so we're gonna need to draw a line with what we want to play. Basically, if you can play all of these consoles, then you've got the vast majority of games under your belt. But more importantly, the vast majority of games people actually care about. I'm sorry, ColecoVision, no one thinks you're cool anymore! And we'll get to PC at the end. You just stay in the corner until we finish this section, okay? Thank you. So, obviously, we have to have all the modern generation systems. That covers us for pretty much all of the previous generation. Except you, Nintendo Switch. And, like, six PS4 games. Oh, and I'll uh, be keeping a tab of how expensive all of this is in the corner right there. So I guess we have to have a Wii U, which... Terrible selling console. Surely it doesn't. I'll explain later. But look, we've got access to this many games officially so far. If we throw in a fat PS3, then that's literally every Sony PlayStation game available between two funny looking boxes. We kind of have every Xbox game available, sort of, maybe? Sometimes? See, because... Xbox has this pseudo backwards compatibility where publishers can basically just remaster their games, but you can use the old disc to download the new version. And there's uh, this many games you can play, which isn't everything, but you know, it's a fair bit. If we uh, throw in a 360, that's half the original Xbox games under a similar but different and worse system, and we end up with a bunch more games, but you know, so far, looking good. I think for most people, who are 21-year-old uh, schmucks like me, this is basically every console they'd want to play these days. But what about the handhelds? Literally just a 3DS, PS Vita, and GameCube, and you're golden. Okay, I'll explain the GameCube. <laughs> you see this thing? It's a Game Boy player. It lets you play all the Game Boy games on the TV. You could get a GBA, but can a GBA play Battlefield Bikini Bottom in 480p? Anyway, the 3DS can play DS games, PS Vita can download some PSP games, so, you know, good coverage there. If you want some more games, let's add in... All the Sega consoles. Mega Drive, Saturn, Dreamcast. All of them. Yeah, unfortunately, there isn't anything backwards compatible with Sega except the Mega Drive or the Master, Re I mean Master System, which saves us one whole console plug. And this is the Mega Drive, so that's not saying much. Oh yeah, assuming you like a PC game, let's throw three PCs in the corner, just round everything out. And none of them have emulators on them. They don't exist. Before we can work out the rough cost of all the actual consoles, we have to work out how much it actually costs to buy, like, a TV and a AVR that can actually, you know, hook into everything in the first place. But a quick search on Google led me to this AVR with six HDMI inputs and three component inputs, which covers nearly our entire setup, actually, um, when we factor in a TV with three HDMI inputs, um, and if we throw in a AVI to HDMI converter. Now this would be a smooth 6600 in Aussie buckaroos based off the rough average eBay price. You could probably get a better deal if you wanted to, but... That's your problem, not mine. I say this as if this is an actual tutorial, but it is absolutely not. If you are following this word by word, then I feel sorry for you. And also, you must have a lot of money. You should, like, give me some of that money. Anyway, how many games do you have access to playing now? You know, casual 38,000 games, 40,000 if you include the uh, consoles, respective virtual consoles, give or take. Though there comes an issue. These storefronts are shut down, and even if they aren't, games are getting removed, especially with a uh, Nintendo. So what if we want to be a little frugal, one might say? Oh!
We don't need a Commodore on Amiga. We can just emulate. We don't need a Mega Drive Tower of Power. We can emulate. Now, of course, you need to legally procure your own copy of the game and get the ROM yourself before you can load up on these emulators, as it's physically impossible to get a ROM any other way. <coughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, if we're gonna use these emulators, let's see how much we can uh, cut all this down. Jesus, really? Yeah, so it looks like you can play uh, pretty much everything right now with a PS5 and a PC with a bunch of emulators set up. There's pretty much perfect compatibility with the 6th generation backwards with pretty decent support for the 7th generation. If it wasn't for this prickly bastard here, Xbox has no games, and with a PS5 you can play the two whole exclusives it has, plus all the exclusives from the PS4 that it still has, I think. And there's also Yuzu, which... For legal reasons, uh, Yuzu doesn't exist. Yeah, so it looks like you can play pretty much everything with a PS5, a Nintendo Switch, and a PC with a bunch of emulators set up. And it costs just as much as the other setup for a PC that can actually emulate all of that. Now, look, I'm sure you can build a cheaper gaming PC, but going off how much mine costs, it's honestly quite interesting how comparable the two setups actually are in cost. But this is assuming you want to spend a bunch of money on a big, fancy, schmancy gaming PC and that you're ready to abandon your thick, juicy, gigantic gaming collection. Okay, that might just be me, but regardless, you can get emulators on consoles themselves. So if we ignore the PC again, how many consoles would we need if we wanted to play all those games from before? The Wii U is an emulation beast. We got native Wii backwards compatibility, which means you have access to the Wii U, Wii, NES, SNES, N64 emulators, if you do a little ROM injection, GameCube backwards compatibility, do the Wii backwards compatibility, so that's every mainline console from Nintendo prior to that point, throw in the Wii U having DS and Game Boy emulators native, and that's all handhelds released prior, except the 3DS on the Wii U. It's pretty impressive. Additionally, there's a Switch, but I'm excluding that for emulation right now, since it's uh, getting software updates and jailbreaking is a little difficult, because it requires a specific version. And let's be real, it's the Wii U is piss easy to jailbreak, so is the 3DS. Oh, yeah, the 3DS. Uh, it's, it is an absolute emulation beast as well, but, you know, portable. You got Game Boy, Game Gear, store DS games and 3DS games as backups, plus NES, SNES emulation. It's pretty solid. Between just these two systems, you have literally every Nintendo console to play besides Switch. And if you throw in a Switch, then you have all, all the consoles between three consoles. It's pretty crazy, bro. It's crazy, dude. PS3, PC is a jailbreak as well. Start swapping some PS Classics images for PS1, and PS2, and PSP, which works for slim models as well, but I haven't tested, and I'll be honest, I have not tried ROM injection. This is not a tutorial or legal advice. If you get arrested for doing this, then it's not my fault. I'm not paying your jail fees. It's something I should probably add, actually. Emulation is never perfect, but it can be pretty damn good a lot of the time. Do your own research, especially with jailbreaking consoles, to put emulators on. Make sure you read the instructions provided extremely carefully. Find up-to-date walkthroughs and always be wary of bricking your console. I'm an idiot. I've managed to jailbreak a few consoles myself. I've also bricked a few devices myself. So, be careful. If I was going to suggest any consoles to buy for the minimum setup, I would suggest a Wii U and PS3, just because they're not that expensive right now, and uh, you can get a lot of different games on them. The main things you're missing out with the setup are modern games, but you're poor, so you don't deserve modern games, and 3DS and Vita games. Still, 39,000 games available to play on only two systems. It's pretty impressive. And I should add that uh, most of the budget was in the 404k TV, at least according to the quick eBay search I did. Which isn't too shabby, I'll be real. And um, please, for the love of God, I hope this video doesn't blow up and uh, destroy the aftermarket for these systems. So if you're watching this video and um, you decide to buy these systems of don't, give me that money instead.
Anyway, I think this is a pretty solid retro gaming setup. Like, you pretty much have everything up to the 7th generation and debatably an 8th generation console of the Wii U. And yeah, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I inspired you to look at your older consoles and, you know, check out some emulation, give them a bit of new life.